Hi, in this video we will look into what is a current transformer and how it works. Have you ever wondered how current is measured in high voltage transmission systems where voltage level is 100 of kV and current level is 100 of amperes? We do not have any emitter that can bear such high level of currents without getting damaged. High currents or voltages of the system cannot be directly fed to relays and meters. So, then how the current is measured so accurately in such high power transmission systems? The answer is through a current transformer are simply called as CT. A CT is an instrument transformer in which the secondary current is proportional to the primary current and have same phase as the primary current. As the current flowing in the high power transmission system is normally very high and cannot be measured by any instrument directly, so current transformer basically transforms the primary current to a safer value that can be measured easily. This secondary current is proportional to the primary current and by using specific multipliers, the exact value of the primary current is calculated by measuring the secondary current. The secondary current can be measured using standard emitter. Now we explain the structural composition of the current transformer. There are four major components of any current transformer, that is iron core, primary winding, secondary winding and insulation. The iron core is the most important component of the CT. It is built up with laminations of silicon steel having low magnetic losses. The core has the capability of generating magnetic flux when current flows through the primary winding. The primary winding of the CT carries the current which is to be measured and is connected to the main circuit. The primary winding is normally a single turn winding and carries the full load current. The secondary winding is wrapped around the laminated core and has a large number of turns. Next we explain the working of a current transformer. The working principle of a CT is based on the law of electromagnetic induction. That is, when an alternating current passes through a conductor, a magnetic field is generated. The main primary conductor carrying high current is passed through the iron core. Resultingly, a varying magnetic flux is produced in the core. As the secondary winding is wrapped around the core, this electromagnetic induction produces voltage in the secondary winding. As a result of induced voltage, current flows in the secondary winding because the secondary winding has a closed loop by either connecting with the emitter or other instruments. The current in the secondary winding depends on the number of turns in primary and secondary windings. In a CT, inverse ratio exists between the primary and secondary currents that is IS divided by IP is equal to NP by NS. In other words, we can say that the primary current will be equal to number of turns in the secondary winding divided by number of turns in the primary winding multiplied by secondary current. So if we measure the secondary current, primary current can be calculated by using the above formula. Most CTs have a standard secondary rating of 1 ampere or 5 ampere and the CT ratios are generally like 400 by 1, 800 by 5, 1200 by 5 etc. Here a ratio of for example 1200 by 5 means that if 1200 ampere current is flowing through the primary winding, the current in the secondary winding will be 5 ampere. So with the help of these standardized CT ratios, we can measure the high primary current using low power rating standard emitters on the secondary side. For example, in a CT with a CT ratio of 1200 by 5, if the emitter connected on the secondary side detects 2 ampere current, it will automatically multiply it with the CT ratio of 1200 by 5 to give us the value of current in the primary winding. So, the primary current will be 2 multiplied by 1200 by 5 that will be equal to 480 ampere. So, in this way, we can calculate the high currents with standard emitters. That's how a high voltage CT looks like. That's the primary terminal of the CT which is connected to the main circuit and carries the full load. The core is mounted across the primary conductor. The secondary winding is wrapped around the core. The cables from the secondary winding are connected to the secondary terminal box at the bottom. The secondary cables are covered in a bushing tube for safety and then further covered by porcelain insulator. The CT is filled with insulating oil to provide further insulation and safety. The oil is regularly checked for ensuring its insulation quality. The oil samples are taken from the sampling valve provided at the bottom of the CT. The level of the oil is checked through a transparent window provided at the top compartment of the CT, referred to as oil level indicator. The oil can expand and contract depending upon the temperature and load conditions. For accommodation of the expansion of oil, an extra volume compartment is provided at the top. 
an earth terminal is provided at the bottom for earthing of the city body for safety purpose under normal operating conditions the second winding of a city is connected to a burden or load and it is closed the burden can be relay or emitter etc so whenever the current flows through the primary winding it always flows through the second winding as well the second windings of a city should never be left open circuited are operated with no load when current is flowing through its primary windings if the second winding of the city is left open circuited in such case due to the absence of counter ampere turns of the secondary the primary mmf will be unopposed and it will set up abnormally high flux in the core this high flux will in turn cause high core losses and subsequently resulting in heating of the core and very high voltages will be induced in the secondary of the winding this high voltage not only cause the breakdown of the insulation but can also result in severe shock if someone touches the secondary terminals of the city therefore if we have to remove the emitter or load it is recommended to turn off the main supply first then we should place a short circuit across the secondary terminals to remove the risk of shock then remove or replace the emitter the ct secondary is normally shorted using a shorting block next we explain some of the benefits and applications of cts CTs are used by utility companies for measuring the load for billing purpose. CTs provide a safe way to provide current without directly connecting the emitter to high voltage circuits. CTs can provide very accurate measurements of current even in the presence of noise and other disturbances. CTs are relatively inexpensive and hence a cost effective solution for measuring high currents. That's all for this video. Keep in touch for more such informational videos.